SS and GPL in this 5v5. So let's see what they have for us. Bands coming through, they can fast. Nautilus and Syndra will start this one off. And I really liked watching the LMS team. The coordination, specifically around TP is what I called out in some of their earlier games. And just in general, the fact that they play very well as a team. You know, they are a very stacked lineup, as Deficio was speaking about. And they love running the double teleport. You know, EU fans obviously very familiar with that back to the Fnatic days, but they're very good at playing around the map. The Katarina pick was one that, okay, didn't win against the LCK squad, but was very powerful. For now, it's left available. Exactly, it's left available, but the Cassiopeia ban also means that Rise is on the table. So now you have to pick between those two or leave them both up. And we have the next couple of bands coming through here. Will be Rengar and Cassiopeia finishing off LMS as you were alluding to there. Zyrene and LeBlanc and Poppy will finish off GPL's phase of banning. So that has left up a bunch for the mid lane, including the Rise, which will be first picked by LMS. Yes. Interesting to see they take the Rise over the Katarina when they took the Katarina and accepted the Rise matchup before. So perhaps learning uh, from experience on the Rift. A lot of power left over. I like the fact that GPO didn't try to pinch, you know, didn't ban one and just give up either the Katarina or Rise. They'll have their answer. We'll see if Optimus is fancying the Katarina though, because I imagine given the fact that it was a very recent change, probably not everyone is confident on their Katarina coming into this event. Yeah, Maple though, for sure, very confident yes, on. Yes. We saw him on earlier, but he still goes to the Rise and values that power since there isn't a whole lot left that would counter him with the Cassiopeia and LeBlanc, as well as the Cinder off the table. Almost feels like uh, he's taking two things away from Opti uh, Optimus, because maybe he doesn't know how to play that Katarina. We know Maple can, and then it's like, what left does he have really for this next pick? What is for certain oh. though, is Ooh, Brand hello. coming out alongside the lease in there for Levi, but Brand maybe taking a a leaf out of Licorice's book here. Yeah. Wildcard teams, Brand apparently it's just going to come out here. Maybe it is the pick that they want to play up against the Rise. Uh, I'm unsure. Maybe it's support, but hey. Feels like we're getting back to the season one, season two matter of Annie's OP. Ah, Brand is ah. the counter pick. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I just can't see it. I think it's probably going to be support, but we've seen Flex pick supports. It was the Nautilus a bit more prototypical around the top and support role, but wait and see. We'll wait and see on the side of the GPL. Uh, we will, and LMS is back over to their side of the court for the next two pickups. They have around 20 seconds remaining before they have to lock these in. Lots still left on the table for them. They have picked up Rise, which will be their mid laner, so could pretty much go anywhere from here. We are just waiting 10 more seconds on the clock, Zyrene. I think that these are the two picks that would get locked in here with the Graves and the Ezreal, uh, because you don't want to pick your top laner here. I feel as though with the Poppy and the Nautilus off the table, the Maokai jumps up in terms of priority, but there are a lot of things that can play really well into a Maokai. You can even go and play Echo over again, right? Or even just change your picks up and have the vein. So I assume you last pick your top laner here if you are the GPL. And BB gonna be once again on his trademark Ezreal, but it does open up a pretty safe laning phase for the vein, and they could last pick a support or deal with the fact that it'll be Brand Swell. I don't really fancy <laughs> Brand Vein as a duel, and that sounds super risky. Obviously, high risk, high reward, but. Don't know if you want to go for that, so maybe it's just to hover to show it off. But in terms of the 1v1 or just how the Ezreal lane works, Vayne was always seen as a pretty comfortable matchup into the Ezreal. Yeah, very passable laning phase. I do think you would go for it here. Yep, Celebrity, he is going to pick okay. it up right there. And the Twisted Fate for Optimus, a little interesting. He'll have to try to infect those side lanes, but once again, last picking that top laner. Very important here for GPL. You don't want to give Ziv a good matchup. If it was solo queue, there'd be the outside chance of the brand top. You do actually see it sometimes. <laughs> if you see a melee matchup, he can just kind of E and annoy you with uh, all the breasts. I've felt the brunt of it, so I've been there, but we have to expect it's going to be I've a brand. It. I don't even oh. know if we've ever seen a competitive game of brand vein as a duo. The brain lane? The brain lane. You nailed it. That's a, that's a good one. What's what the pinky in the story tonight? there? Uh, we were both going there. We went at different angles well, there, Battle well, I was going to go, it's the brain and the bronze, but you know, Different pronunciation on that second word. There you go, there we go. We'll get into it as we get into game as well. But GPL, one pick remaining on their side. LMS, now thinking how they want to respond to this brain lane. I think it's just safety. I mean, Ezreal, obviously a very safe choice. Rise also, the Maokai we were alluding to, maybe locked in the because they're just, I think mean, at this point, they're very unsure about what's going on. It's Ken and support. They're playing a cannon support alongside the Ezreal here. So they have something that can auto attack, lock down, double range lane to actually deal with it. Really interesting. I. I guess they don't want to play uh, like a Zyra into the brand or anything like that, but it is going to be the Maokai for Zip as well, which, you know, he's such a carry top laner, it's kind of a shame, but... Uh. <laughs> I mean, it's not something you see every day coming into the bot lane. Ezreal Kennen up against Brand Vayne. We also had the Maokai lock in there for Zip as well in that top lane, so he'll be facing off there, and that means that the GPL will have that 
quote unquote counter pick for the top lane. And they're going to have com to lock in. And it's complete freedom, right? Maokai, basically anything can lane into Maokai, much like in the mid lane when Morgana was the thing, you could basically lane anything. So it could be a carry. And the Fiora is one to consider. Yeah, uh, QTV, he is known for wanting to play things that split push, that actually fight you like Jax, Aurelia, Fiora. These are really in his wheelhouse. Uh, maybe a Yorick, you know, cross my fingers, but. Yeah, I haven't, uh, haven't seen too much locked of that. In. There it is. There is the Fiora finally being locked in there from the GPL, and that will be going to QTV. So that pretty much uh, hits the nail on the head, as you were just saying, and looking for that split push on the side lane. I mean, this looks like the most Feast of Famine team you could ever <laughs> hope for on the side of the GPL. Split pushing, Duelist in Fiora. Lee Sin is still a very normal jungler, but one can get in the head. Twist of Fate, and then Vayne Brand. I mean, this either goes spectacularly well or abysmal. A GPL. Or they're just like, just get one person fed. Somebody get fed. We talked about they're playing individually well, so, but, but like, not so much as a team. Every man for himself. But if that's like an obvious strategy, the other two lanes are going to get pounded, Zyrene. Like, yeah. This is really, really tricky to pull off. If you super outskill your opponents, sure, you can make this work. But uh, in this situation where we're kind of expecting LMS to be of at least a slightly higher caliber, this is a, a gauntlet, let's say. Uh, I'm going to change my mind here. It is Maokai support not Maokai top. Albus is actually taking the Ken into the top lane. This is a really interesting matchup, and I, it, it's kind of strange because Kennen can never actually get counter-stunned by Fiora. Fiora's repost actually waits for a stun to come through and then will stun you, but Kennen only stuns on the application of damage, which then Fiora negates. So she doesn't apply, or Kennen does not apply a third mark, does not get a stun during Fiora's repost ever, so she can never counter stun. So if Kennen actually wins that matchup at that point, but early on, it is very painful. Definitely something to keep an eye on as we get into game there, Zyrene. But we have the full lineups, the every man for himself composition from hashtag Firewin. But of course, the GPL facing down the LMS who are hashtag Icewin if you want to get your vote in on Twitter. Vote at LOL Esports, show your support see which team can bring it home because it will be the uphill battle here for the GPL lineup. It's not going to be an easy one, but they have the tools to possibly make this happen. Yeah, and the more I'm thinking about this, though, in the bottom lane, the brain lane versus, I don't have a clever name for this one. Uh, I don't know. Maoka. Ezreal Maoka. We'll work on it. We'll work on it. <laughs> yeah, e easy Kai, whatever. Easy tree. Nope, not nope. Trying, trying too hard now. Still, Treezy, Treezy, Treezy. Treezy, there you go. It's Treezy. It's the Treezy lane. The Maokai, all you have to do is point and click on the vein, keep her locked up. Even if she goes invisible, you know exactly where she is, you'll travel right to it, and then her invisibility will come off at the last second. And while so, it's been a long time since there's been the support Maokai, actually back way back when I was casting LPL back in spring of 2015, Alua, one of the supports that OMG had at the time, would run support Maokai very consistently with Uzi's AD carry as the lineup went. It was, I think it was undefeated. He eventually transitioned out of the roster, but it is something that has been messed around with in competitive play. You know, the, the kit does lend itself to being a support, but uh, it's optimistic, you'd have yeah. to say. I do want to see what happens here, right? Because it's optimistic to think that he can W onto the vein and then the ganks come through from Karsa or whoever, but also BB. It lines up a Q and an Ezreal ultimate if you time it at the same time and you have that synergy. Is it optimistic for Optimus to take the TF into mid lane, though, up against the Ryze here? Because we were like, oh, what's he going to pick? Because Ryze was taken away. Does he have the Cat Arena? And then we've got him actually picking the TF here, looking to affect those side lanes. But it's worth mentioning that Maple, once again, bringing out the Colossus. No, not once again. He stole it from Bjergsen. He had never seen it before, remember? And he's like, this is pretty he's good. Like, he's like, this is pretty damn good. I'm going to play this now. So he doesn't need the Storm Raider Surge and <laughs> ends up taking it from him. He talked about all-in trades with the Maokai. Cour courage is of his own. So yeah. A bit of shield to go in, but this should be a very painful lane phase. Because to me, this should be Brand basically being able to 1v2 the side here. Obviously, he doesn't want to eat multiple auto attacks from the Ezreal, but otherwise, he might actually be the pressure in the laning phase to just get Vayne through it. Yeah, and the fact that it is a Vayne lane that has double ranged against a melee in it, that's really favorable for the Vayne. They'll get her to that mid-game. Vayne doesn't spike like she used to. She's a one-item, two-item spike champion uh, very, very early on. We saw it earlier where she got like a 600 crit plus the true damage bolts on top of it at two items. Like, that is absurd to actually have that much damage that early. She's really the only AD carry that can have those types of crits off a of tumble. And I'm a bit skeptical about the switch over to the cannon in top, just because Fiora traditionally has done well in these sort of matchups. This is actually a matchup where, especially if we talk about two items, let's say a lifesteal item, like for example, Ravenous Hydra into QSS, 
Cannon can't really do anything. He can only run away. The all-in will not kill. You get a lot of value in this matchup out of Riposte as well. So I'm skeptical now. Ziv is a fantastic top laner. He's looked good this tournament, but it's a pretty big gambit to actually swap in the Cannon against specifically Fiora. Yeah, the Fiora is a really frustrating matchup. A lot of matchups into Cannon like Fiora and also Aurelia go really well for the Fiora once she hits one item. And Kennen just, you're going after Proto Bell. Not very good in terms of the uh, the effectiveness of that versus whatever she's going to yeah. pick you up. Get, you got ganks, you get a couple of yeah. kills, you teleport out, it works out. But if you just kind of lane to lifesteal item, it's painful time. For yeah. Now, with all that in mind as well, we were looking at the top lane, and Ziv did get the upper hand. It froze in an awkward situation for QTV, and he got poked down. So he'll go back to base, teleport back into the top lane now, and the wave is still frozen there. But he also teleports back in with a Ruby Crystal. This is where it's a complete waste, unless he gets something for this. Because if he's TPing into this wave, now he's going to walk up, pick it up. He's going to have to waste time, because it's slow pushing back towards him. And it's like, just count how long it takes for him to actually pick up a CS here. Uh, Whereas maybe he could have been able to walk it. I mean, lane control has definitely been one of Ziv's strong points for a long time. This guy is certainly a colossus in his own region and one of those top laners that we've wondered how he would do in LCS regions or in other regions around the world. So we signed though, so he is committed to AHQ for at least another couple of splits. Levi looking for a gank in the mid lane. We saw him earlier in the uh, all for one mode. Put on a clinic. He's going to come in here. Land nice the Q onto Maple. Follow after as well. With the flash and with the tempest, might be enough to finish off Maple here. He gets the shield. Will he be He's able to get away? Now. There's it's a reaction from the bar lane. Levi, he will have to back off as Ultimus is there. But Carter, he wants blood. He wants first blood. And that will go right to the grave. Sometimes you want the kill so badly you flash into a smoke screen. That's one of those times. But there's also greed and there's very obviously, two to three members coming to back up the enemy. I didn't say it was good. Yeah. I just, I just said <laughs> the green there times. was kind of insane from the side of GPL. They're feeling the pressure. They know they have a snowball lineup. But when you look for a snowball and reach too far, you kind of fumble what you had already. And it may start the cavalcade for the elements. Exactly. Now he ends up taking up the jungle there. Karsa goes after the wolves, goes after the gromp. Now he has a way into the back. We'll see if he actually goes for something on the bottom. So LMS starting this one off strong with that first blood top lane going well as well for Ziv. 10 CS advantage as he shoved this one into tower against QTV. We should probably visit the bot lane again as well because we saw at the very early stages of that laning phase, Ron OP was landing a lot of good pillars onto that bottom lane, but baby, he was focusing on hitting those minions, shoving it into tower. And right now, it's an even lane. I mean, it's a pass mark for Vayne though. Yes. Any lane where Vayne goes even or ahead is certainly Happy times for the veins, so not too much to focus on there. Levi's top really needs some help here, QTV, because the early laning phase, range versus melee. You can yeah. see how it goes. He's got to be careful, because Ziv is going to hit six. Ziv is going to try to kill. Nope, not going to actually go all the way in. So yeah, just kind of sticking around there. And now QTV with no teleport, with a ruby crystal, and the fact that Ziv hasn't back, Ziv gets full priority here. He could choose to use his TP to go to another lane with his ultimate. He can keep him under turret, try to keep pressure here. There's Alvis going into the bottom lane. Ah, this is what it is. Karsa is being called to the top side underneath turret. Easy kill here onto the Fiora if you're able to get it there with the Graves. He's level six as well. And this might be a surprise. Oh, 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 he's going to find his way Hello. over the wall. <laughs> How's it going? Uh, Levi, he desperately wants these. And if we'll get a couple there with the Tempest, but Karsa will finish the rest of the. Uh, the Krug camp off, and QTV will head all the way back to his inner tower there. Did not want to be in kill range. Bot lane, Ron OP, low on mana, but was trying to find a combo onto BB. Albus just jump in there, Ron, very low. Celebrity trying to find this kill on the vein. He's going to flash forward. The Ignite yep. is ticking. Last but door attack is not quite enough. TF now coming in to try and save the day, but Optimus a little too late to the party. And there's the teleport you're talking about, Zyrene. Ziv coming in from the top lane, finding the kill onto Optimus. You can see what Optimus wanted to do. The reveal was actually relevant given that Ezreal was juking into the brush, but by the time he'd committed, he'd gone too far. Kennen in the right spot. He had the teleport. QTV, who used it much earlier, still doesn't have it up and might actually spill over into a blue bar steal as well. Yep, and they may be able to actually just sit around and give this over to Maple, which would be huge for them because he'll pick this one up and then there's another one that's about to spawn for the LMS. Yeah, and the tier stacking up as well. So happy, happy times for the LMS. We're going to see the replay. When they use everything on Ron OP, you think in your head, okay, Bane's going to chase down, but notice, Bane is level five. Level six, this goes differently. And although the vision helps, Bane just dies to the Maokai Q 
and then it's a cannon with plenty of items. Yeah, he would have been dead anyway, and the fact that they just keep chasing him down the lane is the big part there. Got really greedy for that kill, but that will give Vayne a large power spike in this lane with the items that he has. Hold on, here comes the ulti, just to zone and push him back. Oh man, Ops Goodbye. is playing close in from every single angle. There was no way to get out perfectly oh, executed that was great. from LMS. That was so good. I didn't see Albus coming in there either. Just delivered Albus in on the left side. Uh, Maple's coming up from the front, and then they have Carson in the back. But it's moves like this, and also the nice flank teleports they've made in previous games where you're like, I wish I could see this week in, week out. Now, that would certainly monopolize a lot of talent in the region, so perhaps not ideal there, but QTV trying to make something of this. Levi was trying to set him up for it, but he initiates the grand challenge, but doesn't really want this challenge anymore. He'll jump back towards Maple, oh. flash over the wall for the disengage. I mean, he uses his flash. It didn't even have a phage you know, from the early game, so wasn't going to have damage to do much there. Oh, Ron finding a nice full combo, of course, uh, igniting a passive blaze as well on top of Albus, chucking him down, so it's a little punish there as he tries to make his way back into lane. And now the question becomes, is there a world where Fire can bring it back? And usually you don't say that at eight minutes into a game, but we went over and over in the fact in the draft, Feast of Famine, and the Famine started early. We cast uh, UOL versus Flash Wolves. <laughs> It, it been wasn't a lot as of sad time. as this game. There's been a lot of times but where it was, nine it was minutes, much more sad. Than this. <laughs> we're like, this is this is rough. This is that, really that was rough. nine zero. That was that was a different <laughs> thing. That was uh, four people dying at level one. This is certainly some more optimism, but it's just checking in with the fact that we noticed the draft. We knew the potential things went well, yeah. and we have to check in and say hasn't gone well. Exactly. It hasn't gone well. The way they come back is off of Celebrity. I think he's the one that would be carrying this game. Optimus 0-3, oh so, you know, CS isn't going very well in the top lane for Fire, but Optimus in the mid lane, he has been feeding a little bit here. He has been focused out. Karsa and Maple have done their thing where they team up and they keep going after him. And that's what happens when they have both Flash Wolves members being the jungler in mid with that legendary combo. And the, and the item build certainly is the emergency, right? CDR Boots certainly a normal rush for the Twisted Fate with Coast Flash, but Negatron Cloak, you desperately want Sheen for the cooldown reduction and just for the trades. I mean, you're ganking for a, a no damage mid laner. Oh, here comes Levi once again, connects the ultimate into the Q, trying to keep him outside of that circle, but I'm out of there. Goodbye, see you, nerd. Maple, card. he is being chased down by Optimus. He just have the damage coming out as well, but Koss is there to save him. Flash away oh. defensively, collateral damage for that kill. And Levi desperately trying to escape, but we've got the bot lane reacting now. Here comes Alvin, in. the flash, the twisted advance. Make that the double kill for Kasa. And I was just saying, you're ganking for a no damage mid lane. The mindset was to pull back by the time he committed. Didn't have the damage to finish it off. The mid lane and the jungle were not on the same wavelength, and it puts them even further in the hole. And the Infernal Drake going to go over to Karsa here in the LMS. Oh, man. Right now, it's looking pretty bad. Pretty bad. For well, you know what's yeah. bad? When you look at the enemy jungle and you're like, how many of our guys does it take to kill the 4-0 Graves? The answer's probably two to three. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, when Graves gets going, he really does do so much damage. He's so hard to take out here. Maple takes a lot of damage on his shield there. The Courage of the Colossus did come out. But you just see Optimus, right? His first instinct is to pull back. Then he's like, OK, my jungle did quite a lot of damage. I'll go in as hard as I can. He doesn't have a Sheen. Would it have been the difference? Maybe not. But Sheen and Namtum, I think it would have been a different mindset. They would have actually committed fully for the kill. And instead, they just give over a couple. And if I had to give it to any player on the GPL to try and carry this game, it would have been to Levi. He put on such a showing earlier. He's been incredible in the IWCA and just a generally good member of the team, but he just hasn't really been able to make those plays this game because they just all went awry. I mean, he's completely warmed up on Lee Sin, but maybe it's a little bit different when not everybody else is Lee Sin, placing wards for you and hopping in. But I know that he definitely is a very good player, but they have to kind of stall, let Celebrity scale up, let QTB get back in this game. So he's completely out of this game right now. He almost has double the CS. Oh, this is Karsa with a counter. I don't think I've seen this one before. Levi coming in, but this time the Graves is massive. Gets uh, the kick onto Karsa into the tower, but there is no towers. Maple takes it out. Oh. Optimus oh. blasted point blank by the collateral damage. QTB initiating the grand challenge in with the repost, but it was mistimed on the predict. Doesn't get the lunge Maple's damage. Maple, he's up against the wall. Prevents the final vital from being oh. popped. Oh. Uh, the extra damage from Q finishes off his opponent in the bot lane. Alvin so we have the ultimate, the Ventral Maelstrom. Maybe taking so much more from Celebrity. One more auto attack that kills the kill. Albus moving on to Ron OP. Nice Arcane smash to finish that one off. But now Ziv, 
He smells blood in the water. Celebrity trying to escape through the enemy jungle, but the flash and the extra damage from the Proto Belt as well means that will be an early grave. That's a delayed ace overall for the side of the LMS. They managed to take everyone down. The mid lane was just a disaster. No other way to put it. Karsh is so smart, sitting out of vision. No one can see, and Levi's like, finally, an overextended rise. Yep. Sorry, Levi. Yep, they knew the cleanse was down, so that's where he would end up going after the gold card is locked in. And he asked the question, would the Sheen make the difference? Right there, it would. Yep. It would have been the difference. Carso would have been dead, and then that wouldn't have been a complete cascading effect that now leads to the bottom lane turret. Oh boy. Kasa is gigantic. 5-0-1. Levi tried the play again, and this time he basically got one shot by him. Oh, Ziv is just Speaking in the enemy jungle. Shot. Yeah, he's bound run OP. He doesn't have to stun up just yet. But he even burns the ultimate, adding insult to injury. Celebrity does find a stun against the wall with Condemn, but Maple being there, not a fight that Celebrity wants to take up. He didn't even have to use the proto belt that he has in the inventory for a little bit of extra burst. He had that for an escape in the future, if necessary. And this is kind of the silly season at this point. This is the game very much just almost being completely out of which We're talking about almost 10,000 gold. It's about 8,000 at uh, 13 minutes in, which after all the changes to gold snowballing in the 2016 season lets you know that uh, this certainly is completely out of the way for the GPL squad. For sure, it will be an uphill struggle. We said this at the start of the game. We said it in Champion Select that someone's going to have to go off. And it is still in Celebrity's hands. But trying to face down Maple when he's doing exceptionally well in lane. Cars is massive. Ziv is one-shotting yeah. the support. Well, Ziv also got a Void Staff. So there's pretty much no hope here when you're inside of that cannon ultimate. With the Proto Belt, two items. He has two items when QTV hasn't completed one. He's still sitting on components. And Optimus has got a couple of Dorans and an Amp turn, so that's uh, pretty cool. That's, he's got that that's, going from with That's what I would call that. Um, celebrity, he's 1v2 in the bottom lane. We saw the damage that Reckless could do yesterday on this pick, but slightly different circumstances. Uh, it's Carter and Maple pushing down this bottom tower. Yeah, when you're up against a Vayne, having two point and click CCs on your team is everything you need. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I like, the, I like the disappointment in your voice, Pauls. <laughs> well, I mean, I was looking to him for, to be the carry of the team, for him to go off, and then he just kind of got blasted. The tower. Oh, is, that, is that your GPL bias coming out? Yeah, GPL bias <laughs> coming out here, mate. Uh, mate will be kicked into the tower. Run OP, can he get the kill? No, he cannot. Finally shut down Albus and Carter. Two men against the world. Run OP, he's very low, but Optimus trying to find a kill and return on to oh, oh, hey. World cast lives up to its name and finds a kill. DB in there at the last minute as well, a two for two. But this game, you can see Ziv topside takes a turret during all of that. Five on four, still ends up going even. Still, LMS, they're getting further and further ahead. They have a kill a minute. They are just on fire right now. 15 minutes in, 10K up, and it's just gonna get worse with this turret going down. Top lane, Pinion Wave is up there as well. But kind of the amazing thing is the first slaughter of the tournament, true slaughter, which is what we're seeing here, is in I, LMS versus did, GPL. That was the LMS versus NA yesterday? <laughs> Look, <laughs> NA comes. But, uh, we don't Speaking forget of some slaughters. UTV blown up by Zip, but that was the end of his ultimate before he jumped onto Levi and Ron OP, and they will clean up the mess in the top lane. So at the very end, that was a one for one, and that was the two assists over to GPL. So it's locking up. <laughs> Having assists there's, there's only one way, kill. guys. There's only, there's only up <laughs> for the side of okay. GPL. Happy mode casting engaged. <laughs> right there. Ends up going straight after Maple gets kicked in. Doesn't get that last Q on Duran OP. Just a lack of damage, honestly. Uh, people like Optimus way behind in terms of itemization. Going Negatron Cloak as a Twisted Fate usually doesn't mean much because his base stats are so low that he doesn't really have the health to interact with the you know the, the magic resist. And now he has an Abyssal Scepter, which his, his wild cards very much outranges the Abyssal Scepter aura. So it's kind of an emergency purchase he was forced into. And it doesn't help anybody else on his team. It feels, feels bad. Uh-oh. Albus going in for the initiate. Levi goes in. Levi goes out. Back to base. QTV trying to get out of the way as well. And we'll have to hobble back to that spawn pad. But we've been talking about how good the LMS have looked. Albus yesterday on the Sona. Even today on the Maokai going oh, for the redemption. The it just looks so good right now. And they're going to the left side. They're going mid. Hey. And duked. The old switcheroo back into the mid lane, taking that one out, just styling on the GPL right now. Well, Maple was one of the most creative users of the Rise Ultimate back at World when we were first seeing this champion come out besides Exile in the EU LCS. And they start getting picked up there by the end. 
but he's been very good with that ultimate. And it's a, a skill cap that hasn't really been explored. Most people use it pretty predictably, but I love the people that fake it out, you know, that don't take it or take it for a rotation in this case. Really cool to see, and it's something that will continue to be developed as we see more Rise. Because guess what, guys? Judging by games like this, and of course, just where Rise is, you know, another Rise rework, another yeah, very Rise high OP situation. He's, uh, he's pretty damn good. Yeah, he's going to be around until that next rework that we have scheduled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fourth time. Is that six months from now? Or? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep you in suspense. Thanks. Let's get back into this one. As Elvis finds another kill, the point and click into death. On oh! The the entire lineup of GPL. That was disgusting. Cannon baby right in the back line. It's not even 20 minutes yet. They can't survive. They have families. They can't even surrender. Well, at least Optimus found one kill. Pat out that score line. There you go. Good job. But this is 18 minutes in. As you said, they can't even FF. Albus onto this tower with the rest of his team. This is going to be one of the fastest games of Professional League of Legends ever. And LMS moving on to the Nexus here. Only Optimus to stop them. And they annihilate the GPL in 18 minutes. Exactly what Team Ice was looking for in this matchup. We expected MLMS to come in favorites, but GPL threw down the game. But they went for the snowboard choices, the Fiora last pick, the Vayne brand bot lane. And I actually have to say the biggest defender, Optimus in the mid lane and the Twisted Fate, they didn't get it done. Really, really clean stuff from the LMS.